The Fujifilm X-S20 is here and to my opinion, it's the best middle-class camera out there. In fact, it is like having five cameras in one body. Photo camera, webcam, normal video camera, vlogging camera, and what I call a creative camera. Let's dive into it and find out what it is all about. Hi guys, I'm Johnny from CineD and this is the Fujifilm X-S20. Now, in this new age of camera announcements, I bet you might see so many videos highlighting the vlogging capabilities of the new camera, which are nice. But if you are a filmmaker and looking beyond vlogging or even beyond normal filming, there is a unique feature in this small camera, which to my opinion cannot be found elsewhere in this price category. I hope to get your attention for the next five, six minutes to explain or even more importantly, show footage of what the camera can do. For this review, I teamed up with Peter, who is a professional engaging chef. Setting-wise, I chose to work with something that to my knowledge was not possible up until now in this price range on an APS-C sensor size. And I'm talking about 6.2K resolution in 3x2 open get recording. Yes, very similar to what you can find in the much more expensive X-H2S. Actually, the only difference is the recording codec. Here, in the new camera, Fujifilm implemented H.265 all intra 422 10-bit internal recording at 360 megabit per second, which is robust enough to get excellent results when doing casual creative work. Okay, so a short reportage first and I'll be back right after. Everyone loves the chef. Because when you cook for other people, you give your own energy inside and the people eat that and then they give you happiness and thankful spirit back. That's why I love to be a chef. Using just four or five uh, ingredients for a dish is very important because I'm a really a big fan of keep it simple. And I know it's the hardest way to do it the simple way, but when you have five natural ingredients and you use it wisely, put them together, then you have the perfect end product. And for me, the most important thing is use natural products because they have so much flavor, they have so much energy by themselves. You don't need anything else. So, it's like I'm going for an operation. How do I keep it simple? What do you mean? Um, cooking a, cooking a, a, a meal or how to keep it simple? Life. How do I keep it simple to prepare a meal? Let's start with my biggest advice. Use that with the nature process in your area where you're from at this time where you're living now. And when you use four or five of these ingredients, Mix it with some spices and some herbs and a little bit of olive oil. 
and then you got it. I'm a chef who loves preparing myself because I love to get creative. So in this case, I don't like to cook from a cooking book or something like that. I'm the star of my own life. And so I always want to give a dish my own spirit, my own flavorness, my own energy. And in this case, I, I use a, a recipe, but I change it every time. I think the first step of happiness is when you wake up in the morning and you breathe to be thankful that you're still alive. And then the second part could be a glass of water. Because when you can't drink tap water, you are one of the richest person in the life. And then imagine you are able to move your body in every direction. A lot of people cannot do that. You can do it. <laughs> you just need the time and the spirit to do it for yourself. But imagine you cook for another person. Everyone loves the chef. Thank you, Peter. It was truly great working together with you. So what you saw was recorded in a few hours with the XS20 together with the Siri Saturn 35mm 1.6 squeeze anamorphic lens, which cost $1,299, exactly like the camera. Actually, for the interview part and the outdoor shots, I added the Siri 1.2 squeeze anamorphic adapter as I wanted to get a two times squeeze. But if you really want to be precise and get a perfect 40 to 1 aspect ratio from a 3 by 2 sensor, then 1.6 squeeze is the way to go. By the way, for the close-up shots, I used some diopters as the Siri anamorphic lens is far from being satisfying when it comes to minimum focus distance. But the lens itself is a whole different conversation and I want to stay focused on the camera itself. For those who are seeking even higher recording quality beyond of what the internal recording is offering, you can output a raw video signal via HDMI into an Atomos or Blackmagic design recorders. And no, simultaneous internal and external recording is beyond the capabilities of the camera. So I can hear you asking if recording in 3x2 is beneficial for filming in any other way but when working with anamorphic lenses. And the answer is absolutely yes. Depending on your final export, you can use the footage you shot with your spherical lens on a 16x9 timeline for reframing your shot or even create a vertical video, which is very common these days. Okay, so we have, let's call it a three by two creative mode, which by the way, cannot be found in the more expensive Fujifilm X-H2 and X-T5. I find it interesting, especially as the new X-H and X-T models from Fujifilm are having the newer X-Trans5 SIMO sensor, while the X-S20 still use the older X-Trans4. But we know the sensor is only part of the story and the X processor found in the XS20 is the newest, meaning 5. 
This might explain the power that this new camera has in order to record 3x2 open gate internally, but leaves the question open, why not the X-H2 and X-T5? What else? Obviously, it is a photo camera with a 26 million pixel sensor. It can also serve as a webcam or streaming device with a direct connection to your PC. Next is what I call normal video modes, which is pretty much becoming a standard on all the latest batch of Fujifilm cameras. And I'm talking about 4K 16x9 or DCI 17x9 up to 60p. There is of course the possibility to film in HD in normal mode up to 60p and a high frame rate up to 240p. The recording quality in those high frame rates is like the one found in the X-T4 for example. So it is fine, but that's all. By the way, HDMI external high frame rate recording up to 120p is possible too, but I had no chance to check the quality of such recording. But we do have an additional recording option. Now you can get an extended continuous recording time in full HD in 50 or 60p if you set the camera to LP mode. What it does, it crops the image a bit, like when recording in high frame rate, and by doing so, less data is being processed, allowing longer recording times. Speaking of which, if you are concerned about overheating, you can always add the Fujifilm fan at the back of the camera for greater flexibility. So, last but not least, we have the new vlog mode, and you can simply dial into it if you wish to start recording yourself out of the box. Please be aware that the default recording resolution is 1080 30p, and the film simulation is Provia. But the good thing is that any of those settings can be changed according to your recording needs. Audio is set to manual on 0 dB, not automatic, and the autofocus will lock on continuous mode, making it easy to focus on your face or if you're demonstrating a product, it will get it too. There is one additional autofocus mode worth mentioning. If you're on the video mode, you will get the normal subject detection settings. But if you move the dial to auto mode, then you will get something completely new. That's a new subject detection settings auto. And this will become handy when filming people, objects and animals, for example. Taking things into perspective with such a small and lightweight camera, together with the Fujifilm Bluetooth tripod grip and the Fujifilm XC 15 to 45 mm lens, you have a complete vlogging kit that you can take and use in a creative way anywhere. So let's summarize. The new Fujifilm XS20 might look similar to the XS10 from outside, but the grip is a bit thicker due to the fact that it accommodates a larger battery inside. Anyway, it is a much more advanced camera, at least for filming video, and that alone justifies the price increase from its predecessor, at least in my opinion. Where this camera falls short is mostly when looking at the EVF. Its quality is just fine, making it not so easy to focus manually. Also, IBIS is okay, but to my opinion, there are cameras from other brands who are doing a better job when it comes to stabilizing the image. We also ran our lab test having the final firmware version of the camera, and as you can see, the rolling shutter performance is just average, while the dynamic range is quite good, depending on the resolution and frame rate that you choose. Last but not least, who is this camera for? Well, if you are a filmmaker who is already using Fujifilm camera like the X-H2S, the X-S20 might be a perfect companion, especially if you are shooting a lot with anamorphic lenses. 
For other creators, this camera might be very appealing too. It's powerful, it's small, lightweight, easy to use, and can simply be taken anywhere. Drone operators might consider using this camera too because of its size and open gate capabilities. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but such a feature-rich camera with up to 6.2K 3x2 open gate recording in 422 10-bit internally, including F-Log2 with an APS-C sensor size at this price point is not so easy to find, if at all. Okay guys, that's it, here you have it. Comments below. I would love to hear your opinion. Thank you guys for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.